Well, good morning to you, and welcome back to the Higher Grounds Podcast. Again, thank you for joining us each week, and we're glad that you've tuned us in today. And no matter what time you're watching, whether early or late, we're very appreciative of the fact that you have tuned us in. Recently, as I have been looking at the uh, social media uh, that we have put out through the last two years, I have been noticing some folks that have been going back in our archives, Brother Matthew, and watching several of the things that we've put out through the through the last two Praise years, God. and we're... We're very grateful to you for that. We're very, very thankful. Well, uh, Brother Wilson, glad to have Big K from the Big K's Corner Big on the K's always good to be here. Round table. Yeah, thank you for being with us. He's not drinking coffee for some reason. Don't know why. He just recovered from the uh, the COVID Asaurus virus. Yes, sir. I yes. have been to purgatory. And back. <laughs> you made it back. Yes, yeah, sir. Somebody yeah. paid me out. Yeah. So well, write that, a book, Purgatory is Real. Yeah. Purgatory is Real. Yeah. They that endure the end, the same shall be saved. You endured all the way to the end, brother. Yes, sir. And uh, I will say this. I will say this. Uh, I was no match. You were no match for the, no match for the, the Corona Soros virus. Bad oh, stuff. And uh, I take back everything I said that implied. If it took you down, you're just not healthy. You you need to get in shape. Yeah, you, know, you take all, all, so you did say some things like that under my breath. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. So I, these were you know thoughts, yeah, so so to speak. I, basically, I think people was uh, milking it to get out of work. Yeah, you know, on their jobs. I so the so back. the Lord allowed you to. Oh yeah, go through it and absolutely. Uh, and so you respect it now. Greatly, greatly respect it. I greatly. Well, I still think people use it to lay out of work, though. <laughs> ain't no doubt about that. <laughs> they, of course, uh, they'll use any excuse. This yes, is sir. as good a one as any, right? Yes, sir. So, me and Matthew, we are the ones drinking the coffee today. We have had some good whole bean coffee sent in by one of our listeners. Death Wish Coffee has been sent our way. Mm. Mm. Death Wish Coffee. It's got a skull and crossbones on it, and it says it's organic. Look, it's a warning on the back there. Oh, it's got a warning on the back. You, you it says, do, warning, you, the world's strongest coffee. Well, you do know that the, the skull and crossbones is the national medical symbol for poison. Oh. Yes. So we drinking poison? You're drinking poison. Well, we're handling it real good. Well, they can draw our blood like now and make an antidote. That's right. So at sea. See? There you go. We got the venom in us, and yep. now we got the antidote. I there praise God it. for it. There you have it. Uh, there's nothing I like, very few things I like more than a good cup of coffee. And That's two cups of coffee. When? That's what you Except said. two cups yeah, of coffee. Yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, this, this they say it's the strongest coffee out there. You've not had Turkish coffee. Whoever wrote that on there? Well, I've seen that That'll Turkish make... coffee. I've never yeah. tried it. I was scared to drink it. Well, that's kind of like syrup. Yeah, it looks coffee it looked... syrup. Yeah, yeah. It'll. Uh... Brother it... Jody Hognett was telling me about that Turkish coffee, and I got oh, to looking at some of that stuff. I said, I don't know if I can. No, drink we're it. not going to do that. You can, can have it. a lifter knocking in your engine, and it'll put it south. <laughs> 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 It's well, just, just good for high down. mileage. Yeah, See, good for high good. mileage. Ain't it? That's good for high good. mileage. Yeah. Well, how are things going, Brother Wilson? Since you got over the Caracas Bacchus. Well, um, I will say this. I will say this. There's a couple of oddities that it left in my life, and that is this: no taste, no smell. And uh, I've never experienced anything like that. Mm -mm. And uh, you, I can take a piece of big red chewing gum. Yeah which is, you know, one of the hotter brands out there. And it will burn like cinnamon, but there's no taste. No taste. It's like chewing a piece of paper. See, this is a good, this is a good launching pad for, you know, losing weight. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. If you want to drop a few pounds, let somebody with the corona cough on you. And you'll you'll do it. <laughs> you will drop them. There you go. Hey, yeah. how's it going with you, Matthew? That's, that's going good. Holding her down. Holding her down. Amen. 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 Well, we're, uh, you know, both these guys are not new to any of you, but they're not normal regulars here for week to week. But uh, Brother Matthew and, and Brother Wilson were here, and we're Brother Wilson and I are going to be filming later on this evening some of the Big K's Corner episodes that um, some of you have been uh, enjoying. 
And I was I was with a preacher just the other day, and and he said that big case corner guy. I said, yes, sir, brother, brother Scott Wilson. He said he is putting out some really good stuff. I said, well, I of course he that. does. I said he's. Uh, I wouldn't you expect us to put out bad stuff. So not on the higher grounds. Not on the higher grounds. We set the bar higher than that. So. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, sir. Absolutely. So here's what I, I I wanted to come to you with. Now we we discussed this topic. Uh, Two years ago, and we have alluded uh, alluded to it a few times here on the podcast. But this is a topic that is near and dear to us. And with newer viewers coming on and listening to the material that we're putting out, we want to always try to give you material mm-hmm. that you're going to be able to take and plug it into your everyday routine and utilize it for your greatest good and God's greatest glory. And so today I brought the guys on to talk about the subject of prayer, devotional prayer, talking about prayer in our daily lives and what daily prayer means to, to us as, uh, as children of God and the effectiveness of him with the Lord. You know, I, I asked Terry Dietz about that years ago, and mm-hmm. he said, there's just some things I don't discuss, you know, about the personal intimacy that I have with the Lord, right. you know, and, and I, I get that. But give me some ideas. Well, one of the things that I, I would say uh, it, about the time of prayer, some, some do it in the morning, some do it in the evening, some do it both. But uh, in my personal life, there is two areas concerning the time as far as the clock goes that, that I, I, I began to accentuate a, a deeper focus on. And one of them was when my children were growing up, is when is it best for them, for me to spend time with them in praying? Because I didn't want them to get this, you know, it's a routine. I'm sure growing up they did feel that it was a routine. Yeah. And it, but well, there's uh, nothing bad with routine. Well, well, like for instance, for instance, uh, there there is a there is a thought that came to me, and and it, and here's what it was: in our morning devotions. With my children, we had morning and night devotions as as we were rearing children. It dawned on me they they hear me preach, you know they hear me pray, we pray together, and it just dawned on me they don't see mom involved in in prayer. Yeah. So one of the devotions, either morning or night, either one of the two, I would always ask her to pray first. And, and I watched them begin to gravitate toward their mother spiritually as they grew older. And, uh, and, and I'm sure they knew mom prayed, but it's something about them hearing, something right. about them seeing. I was just, I felt like being a glory hog, for lack of better words. Yeah. Yes, sir. And uh, I wanted them to share, you know, with their mom some prayer time. And, and we, we chose to do that. When we settled it all down, we chose to do her, we'll allow her to pray first in the mornings. Yes. And it was right, right, you know, right before the day began. The second thing that that really affected me in my personal life is I don't know why. It could just be a it could just be a um a mind thing. It could just be a preference. I don't know. But there's something more gratifying in my in my spirit in my nighttime praying than in in the morning when when I why do you think that's so is it because your head's not as clear in the morning I um I don't have that answer I've never pondered the why mm. but um <clears throat> but uh I I I, take, I have an oil lantern and uh, a lot of times I'll just cut the lights out and take the oil lantern and light it and have the light by the lantern. Everything else is dark and read by that night, by that little light uh, from the oil oil lamp, something relay. Usually it's either Raven Hill or Bounds. Mm. Read a few things and then go to the Word and then just pray. And it's just so, it's, it seems more uh, silent. There, there's, uh, there's uh, everything. Everything is is done for the day, mm. and it's just you and God in the darkness. 
Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> that does my spirit. Uh, is that generally right before bed, or is that the last thing you will do before you hit the sack? It, usually, when I when I go into one of my night seasons of prayer, it's usually <clears throat> after I would normally go to bed. It's usually later in the night mm-hmm. when I when I yeah. when I head that direction. Yeah. Uh, but normally we, uh, uh, like everyone else, we always have a prayer time before bed, you know, evening devotions yes, and sir. all that. But when I get into, especially during a fast, when I'm fasting, I love praying at night. Gotcha. I gotcha. Love, and I don't want a light on. I don't want yeah. nothing on. I just. just what is your, um, th- and there, there are many different postures, I mean, with bodily postures and prayer. Uh, what is your your preferred posture in praying prostrate on the ground yeah laid out before yes. the lord how about you matt i like on my knees on your knees yes, yeah, yeah. I, I years ago when i was suffering with a lot of knee trouble i would either lay prostrate on the ground which i i still prefer to do i, I really generally start off um i'll start off on my knees and then before long i'll, I'll be prostrate before before the lord um, but I, I used to walk a lot yes. and pray, and I still do. I still walk and pray some. Uh, you know, it's not really important the posture, but at the same time, um, it is a part of of part of praying. And I like to ask people, you know, at, you know their their posture in prayer. Yeah. Where do you, where where do you pray generally? Do you have a particular where? Um, well, one of my favorite places when I'm, you know, really in a pursuit, as in a fast, and I'm really in a pursuit yes. after prayer, one of them's the tree up on the hill. Yeah. And uh, here at the here at the property. Yes, sir. That's one of my favorite prayer spots. Is up there, just in between that big oak tree and that volleyball court, and uh, I, I I enjoy that. Another one is is down in the field behind the church near the basketball court. Yeah, that's a good place. And uh, I love playing, uh, praying down there. Uh, my most used prayer spots uh, is is in the living room and uh, and uh, in my vehicle. Got gotcha. you. I, I, I hope y'all don't think I'm carnal for sitting in my truck and praying. <laughs> But um, just you know, uh, there's uh, like I said, it's just it's just that serenity. Yes, sir. I don't want anything. I don't even want to hear a bird chirp. Right. When I'm praying. I and see, I'm different. I'm totally different. Uh, to bring glory to God and to to help us with our communing with the Lord. Now, a lot of people in their prayer time, they have a basically a, a, a liturgical type of prayer life whereby it's vain in its repetition, and they say the same things over and over, uh, though it may not be a rosary-type prayer, as the Catholics pray, or another Protestant-type prayer from a Protestant prayer book, yet the, in their own private time, they have their own little cliches memorized, and there's no feeling. It's just a matter of doing your duty, getting your time in and going about your business with no reality of God. Now, prayer was never intended to be that way. Prayer was intended to be a communion between you and the Lord. And so we want to talk to these guys today about their personal prayer lives and how God has worked in them through their prayer life and what kind of relationship it has ignited between them and God. I was asking Matthew earlier today about his go-to reads in regard to prayer, the books that he reads about it. And I was telling him that you know my go-to is... Uh, constantly E.M. Bounds. You can't get much better than E.M. Bounds on the subject of prayer. I'm also reading The Power of Prayer right now by Ari Torrey, which has had some very good information in it. But E.M. Bounds made this statement. He said, every mighty move of the Spirit of God, every one of them in history has its source in the prayer chamber. In other words, what Bounds is saying is, if God is going to move uh, for you and I and move on our behalf, uh, He's going to do it on the basis of our communion with the Lord. 
I was talking, I was reading uh, Power of Prayer from, from Tory uh, today or yesterday, and he was talking about the earnestness of people in prayer and how that there's a lot of people who pray, but they don't pray in earnest and how important that sincerity is. So uh, with that being said, Brother Wilson, I know that that this is this is an important area to you. I know, Brother Matthew, this is an important area to you, and it's important to our ministries. Tell me a little bit about uh, prayer to you. Um, give me a quote or two if you have some, and kind of give us an idea of how your your personal prayer time goes. Well, my personal prayer time has changed throughout the years. Uh, far as when I was, uh, I worked a full time job, and uh, now I'm pastoring full time. Not that I wasn't pastoring full time before, right? Uh, but when I worked a public job, I worked third shift. And so I've done that for five years prior to passing the church. And so the years prior to third shift, I had the normal routine as any other man that prayed would get up in the morning and uh, get in the, get in the hold of the Lord in prayer, maybe do some reading, some devotion time, drinking some coffee, and then go to work and then come home and then uh, do the same thing that evening. But now that I've worked third shift, my days are consisted late evening. Uh, like where I would used to get up first thing in the morning before I started working third shift, I would still do that, but not not as intense as I would at later evening right. when, uh, whenever everything was settled and quiet and I'd get in my prayer closet or my study time and pray. And it's not the same way every time now. Right. Uh, third shift does make a big difference on somebody's life. and uh, But... There's a few things I like. I like to look at, like a prayer is a six-letter word you can do anywhere. And uh, we we've made we've we, of course, if you've read any Leonard Ravenhill's books on prayer, it'll make you feel like you ain't done no praying at all. That's exactly right. right. We was talking about it before we had done a podcast. He said if a man ain't praying four hours a day, he's playing. And yeah, I, I don't have that type of prayer life. <laughs> like, and then of course we don't have that type of power than men have neither. Right. And uh, so, I, six letter word you can pray anywhere, and uh, nothing is discussed more and done less than the subject of prayer. Well, that's the truth. And uh, we've well, you can read many. Matter of fact, uh, one writer I read behind he's taught men ought to pray always, and he in his introduction, uh, knowledge me of the book, he was saying that how there's more books on prayer being written, but evidence that's been less been done. Right. And uh, so. Uh, when it's the hardest to pray, you need to pray the hardest. And uh, so we can we can talk about prayer, and we can have many quotes about prayer. And of course, I there's nothing wrong with it, but I think we need to put feet to the action and start right. praying and get or back knees to, to it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Matter of fact, I got that wrote. The only way the church can remain on its feet is the members are on its knees. Yes, sir. and uh, so I think prayer is very important. It's vital. It's vital to our Christian life, and and uh, I, I need to do it more. One of our friends, Brother Wilson, that <clears throat> you and I both know know a lot about prayer would be Brother Milton Taylor. Yes. And uh, Brother Milton is a praying, praying man. And I heard him one day, he was talking about the subject of prayer, and he, he is a joy just to listen to pray, yes, you know, just to sit down and listen mm-hmm. to Brother Milton. And, of course, he's a member there at Brother Tony Finney's church and where Brother Stephen Aldridge mm-hmm. is at now as the associate. But Brother Taylor made this statement. I've never forgotten it. He said, if you can't pray as you would, pray as you can. And here's what he was saying. He was saying there's a lot of people that – that just throw in the towel on their personal prayer life to some degree because they don't feel like the way they're praying is the way they want to pray. Yeah. They're not they're not getting out of prayer what they feel they should be getting. They don't have the liberty to pray the way they should be feeling it. And he said if you if you don't feel that or you don't sense that don't stop praying. Yeah. Just pray as you can, yeah. and then God will fill in the blanks and get you to where you need to be. And I have found that to be so true in my own personal prayer, prayer life and prayer time. Um, you know, when you look at Jesus Christ, I mean, you, you were sharing some things yeah. with me earlier about his prayer time. He prayed in the mornings. He prayed in the evenings. Mm-hmm. He prayed all night long. Yes, sir. He prayed in temptation. Mm-hmm. He prayed over food. He prayed over sick people. Yes, sir. I mean, when you look at the prayer life of Jesus, it's multifaceted. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. It is. Um, what about you, Brother Wilson? I mean, in regard to your personal prayer life, what's it like? <clears throat> uh, we're not asking you to necessarily give every right. intimate detail of your prayer time than that. Um, I will start off with hymns uh, and spiritual songs being played in my ear while I get my prayer started. And I'll start maybe with three to five, sometimes ten songs that will play in my ear. 
And I am taking what Ephesians 5 said, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns, spiritual songs, singing, making melody in your heart, the Lord. And so I'm, I'm starting with those. And as the singer, whoever the artist may be, is singing the hymn, I will take that excerpt from the hymn that he just said or she just said, and I will quote that back to God and thank him, you know, for being who he is. And from then, once I get that done, I will go into instrumental hymns where when I start making my my specific prayers to God that are not in worship. So I'll start in worship. And then I'll go into the work of prayer, the labor of prayer in intercession. And that's kind of how I do that. Yeah. When, when, I, uh, when I was uh, uh, referring to, to my oil lantern, um, <clears throat> there's a little story of how that, how that happened. Uh, the, 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 one of the prayer shacks, it's the second prayer shack that, that we ever had. Mississippi one, the one I was in. Mississippi. Yeah, that was my second one. Uh, a good friend of mine, uh, probably listening now, or or will sooner or later, <laughs> this podcast, brother Dave. Oh yeah, and uh, and brother Ray, uh, Ray Kane. That was my bass player. Yeah, and still both of them still there yeah. today. And uh, but they 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 erected that thing for me and got it up. But we didn't put any electricity in it. And uh, now I'm going to tell you right now that wasn't my idea. That was uh, that was uh, brother Charlie. He's in heaven. That was his <laughs> idea. And he said if we put electricity in it and, and put an air conditioner in the window, we'd lose the power of God. Is that what he said? And he I didn't it. know Charlie was gone. And yeah, he, he yeah he he passed this just recently with cancer. I didn't know that. And uh, but but uh, eventually we did. But but those first two years, I mean it was I mean it was just sweating it out in there, and that was the only light we had. That was, was the lamp. The only light. light we had was <laughs> was that that I had one in each corner yeah. of the prayer shack, and. Um, and my mind just got real nostalgic through that. Yeah. You know, and I started thinking about, you know. Brainerd and. All, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, probably the best prayer warrior that ever lived was Brainerd. But I'm telling you, his journal is monotonous reading. It's, I mean, it, it's, it's melancholy. Oh, man. Yeah. But uh, I was telling Matthew Brain, David Brainerd, who of course ministered to the the Indians, Indians. in Pennsylvania, uh, was uh, he was uh, engaged to be married to Jerusha Edwards, Jonathan Edwards' Jonathan daughter, Edwards and daughter. said he wouldn't marry her because you know he was married to God, you know, pretty much. And he would, I was telling Matthew, he would literally pray in the snow till he melted the snow around his body. I mean, That's just in his journal. Yeah, and it was actually his Indian sidekick that made that quote. That's not something he bra- bragged upon himself. Right. That was an insert that his convert said about him. <laughs> said he the quote wow. went something like this. It's not word perfect, but he said something about I've seen him pray. Until he was froze solid to the ground, yep. or the snow no melted, melted easy. Wow, mm-hmm. that's right. And his and his job was, uh, you hold my horse, and yeah. <laughs> that was, right. you hold my horse, <laughs> and he'd stop and he'd pray and he'd go to the village. Sometimes it wouldn't be but six people in the village, and he'd he'd pray all night. But wow. Brainerd wanted to go to heaven more than he wanted anything else, yes, and he sir. died before he was forty of consumption. You yes, know. Sir. But he was a praying machine. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. We know when you study Jesus' earthly life through the Gospels, you'll find he instructs the believers to pray. And I've always liked to use, uh, you know, John 17 as Jesus' sure. longest That's, prayer. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And uh, his most intense prayers in the Garden of Gethsemane is what becomes great drops of blood. And I've done a lot of research on prayer when I preached on the priority of prayer. Uh, if you'll read, if you'll read the four Gospels, Luke deals with Jesus praying more than any other gospel. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And it and it gives the physical effects yes, of prayer in his yes, life. Yes, sir. And uh, this, of course, that's why Luke talks about his sweat yeah. becoming great right. drops of blood. Twenty four. You study, yes, sir. You study his life and study him praying. And always, I always use it as our encouragement and our example of prayer. And uh, several times we find Jesus, especially in Mark chapter number one and verse thirty five. He said he departed, speaking about Jesus in the morning, rising up a great while before day. He went out and departed into a solitary place, and yep. there he prayed. Alone. Alone in solitary place. Yes, yeah. Sir. 
Yeah. Well, you know, in Luke Luke eleven, Luke eleven, um, the Bible said, the yeah. yeah. Well, the Bible yeah. said, of course, he prayed. Yeah. Luke eleven two said mm-hmm. that his disciples said to him, said, "Teach us to pray." As John also taught oh, his disciples mm-hmm. to pray. They didn't ask him to, to teach preach. him how to preach. Mm-hmm. You know, they asked him to teach him how to pray. Yeah. Uh, but uh, was it Luke eighteen verse one that that where he talked about? Uh, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. And Is it faint Luke? Not. Yeah, I believe it's Luke eighteen mm-hmm. one. Men ought always to pray and faint not. Yeah, sir. and and of course you know, always praying and like Paul said, uh, praying without ceasing has not to do with out with with no cessation of praying, but it's that spirit and that that man. Yes. Is he doesn't divorce himself from his spirituality to engage in his carnality, right. but he's constantly in a spirit of oneness and communion yep. Yep. with God. Yes, sir. Which is what we are missing yep. today. Yep. And when you look at the potential that prayer has for the believer, I, the the devil has sold us a bill of goods, friend, about not being engaged in prayer. Yep. Yes. You know, uh, was it Philippians 4, 6, be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Yep. Uh, Mark eleven twenty four. what things whatever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. And we can go on and on yes, and sir. on about the possibilities and potential of prayer. And then, you know, you got guys that, that to kind of, uh, to kind of take the edge off of those great verses on prayer, we'll go to the book of First John and say, well, you know, it's just according to the will of God. It's just according to the will of God. But very few of them labor enough to even find out what the will of God right. is. Right. You know? Well, there's, 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 a, there's a notation that, that I gave myself and uh, that stands true to, for me anyway, and it has been proven over and over again. You was referring earlier to um, the idea of, of uh, Brother Milton Taylor sharing with folks, regardless of how you feel, pray. Pray. In spite of, I'll promise you this much, if I've never learned anything in life, it's this. I may not, I always feel something when I pray. I, right. I, I always feel something. That's just me. That's just me. I may not feel like that something is always an encouraging thing, but I've always walked away edified or rebuked, whatever the Lord yeah. met with me on in that prayer yes, time. But but it's what I will say can, to, to uh, uh, set a little amendment behind Brother Milton. You may not always feel, you may not always feel like praying, but if you've ever had a prayer life, You'll certainly feel it when you're not praying. You got yes, that right. Exactly right. You got that right. Exactly First right. time that God ever really met with me in prayer and manifest His presence to me, I was 16 years of age. I got away from God after that for a period of time, short period of time. But there was something about that experience that I had had with God as a 16 year old boy that I never got over and was constantly drawing me to God, even yes, when sir. my heart was not right constantly drawing me to the Lord. And that's one of the beauties of prayer is that it brings you to the place and point of intimate oneness with God. It really does. It really does. I, you know, we're nearing the end of our podcast today, but if I were going to say one thing to the podcast family with our nation being in the shape she's in, dear God, we need somebody to pray. Yes. 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 We, uh, brother Wilson and I and some more gather up here on Friday night, uh, Saturday nights and pray at 9 o'clock at night. And it has been really phenomenal, some of the things we've experienced in prayer. Wouldn't you agree, preacher? Yes, sir. And and um, uh, uh, one more name for the for the podcast audience I would recommend, and uh, uh, Reese Howe, The, the Intercessor. Mm-hmm. Great book. Uh, that is absolutely one of the richest books I've ever read. On the subject, on the subject of subject getting the whole prayer. prayer. Amen. Well, listen, we have wound her down. I appreciate uh, these gentlemen being with me today, and I appreciate you joining us for this good discussion on prayer. And as we say from the Higher Grounds podcast, you, friend, keep pressing on the upward way. See you next week. Mm-hmm.